everybody Danny Ward here and in this week's training I'm going to deal with a very popular problem that I see a lot of golfers having which is swaying. Have you ever looked at yourself on camera or have been told by somebody that you sway from side to side and you've tried a lot of drills and a lot of exercises but you're not really having much progress? You probably realize it's a big killer in power and, a, and destroys accuracy. Well today I'm going to reveal three things that you can start to do that should really make a big difference to this. So let's get started. Now the first thing I'd like you to consider is it's just a matter of understanding. So a lot of people don't really understand the backswing and how it should be, uh, how we should actually make a backswing in the first place. They've often been heard things like we're going to make a big turn or we need to transfer our weight to our right side and our left side but they haven't really been explained sometimes how to go about doing that. So in an attempt for instance to transfer someone's weight to their right side they naturally sway to the right and then to the left so they create this lateral movement. Okay. Some people have been told to make a turn and sometimes making a turn it's a lot easier to sway back to the right and then through to the left. Now, what I want you to kind of uh, uh, to let you know is that the golf swing is neither a right or left motion, okay? What we try to do in a golf swing is we try to kind of stay very constant, very steady of the golf ball, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to make a connection and put pressure into the ground. So in order to do that, the way we make a backswing um, is we put the backswing into a high position here. Now a great coach called Pete Cowan, one of European Tour's um, number one coaches, came up with a wonderful image, I love this image, of a spiral, imagine your backswing like a spiral staircase. And what that basically means is, when you're swinging here, the body spirals up into position. It doesn't go round and around, it doesn't go up this way, it spirals up and then spirals back down because we want to put pressure on the ground to strike a golf ball, okay? So imagine that now, if we are going to spiral up into position so that, so that what happens is the pressure, it starts to climb up here, okay? Look at the difference. This leg, does it what will happen? Does it want to move this way when we're climbing? It doesn't really, does it? We're going up there, it's going to stay back a little bit to go up, up into the sky. If on the other hand you've got the mindset of it's not climbing but it's moving laterally, that's going to encourage your hips to move laterally. Okay, so let me just summarize that. The whole swing spirals up, so it climbs at this angle, okay? Look at this here, it starts to climb up, up, up. And in this situation, the right hip's climbed, the left hip's uh, gone this way, and we're going up into position, and the right leg has stayed at this angle. It hasn't gone from this angle to this angle, which would be a sway, okay? So the first thing I want you to do to hopefully start to remove this um, sway in your golf swing is to consider the f uh, how you're imagining the actual backswing itself. It needs to be a climbing motion, okay? Now, one thing you can look out for, okay, which is the second point I'd like to look at, is how you go about practicing this and being aware of it when you're actually hitting uh, balls in a driving range. What you could do is you could either grab a, a ball like this, okay, put a ball on the outside of your right foot, okay. You could also use a towel, anything where you can feel the outside of your right foot, the pressure. And what I want you to do, the aim here, is to try and keep the right leg at basically this angle. And your right hip acts as like a door. So as you're kind of swinging backwards, okay, you're keeping your weight is nice on the inside of your right foot, and your hips providing a clearance for you to climb, it opens the door for you to climb upwards. But as you're doing this, you can see I'm staying very constant, okay? If you start to sway, you'll immediately feel the pressure of the golf ball or whatever you put on the outside of your right foot on your foot itself. So it gives you immediate feedback, okay? The third thing you can do would be something you could do at home. I know a lot of you might not have time to come to driving ranges at, um, to work on this, so you can just grab a mirror. And what you can do in front of a mirror is start to practice looking in a mirror, and when you're swinging backwards, having a look at the angle of your right leg, 
and just practicing swinging and stop. Check your position here and go back down. Take your moment, have a look in the mirror, check your angle, climb back, okay? When you start noticing yourself moving here, immediately you've got some feedback, so it's just about rehearsing, okay? And this is what I'd like to do also if you manage to get to a driving range. If you can, find a mirror, have a look at the mirror, do some rehearsals, okay? When you're hitting golf balls with this, what I'd like you to do is a lot of my clients when they're practicing and they're trying to work on, let's say, getting rid of this sway, I had a client recently that was trying to get rid of it. They, they took, the set, let's say, the first two points I've mentioned, and then they would go and start to, okay, I got it down, and yep, no problem at all, and they'd start to hit all these shots. Now, the problem with that is you're not able then to focus on that one movement. And when you go and hit a golf ball with a full golf swing, it's too complex. You've kind of, you've, you've chucked, chucked it all into one swing. What we want to do is just dissect it and go, right, we want to work on one element of the golf swing, which is your sway. So what's the best way of doing that? Well, the best way is to completely ignore shots to start off with and focus entirely on how you're going to get this much, much more connected, controlled, whatever you want to call it, from here. And the way I would work on it is to take your time, nice and slowly, turn back, stop, maybe just check, and then hit the golf ball. So what you're doing is then you're able to link the two or three points that we've focused on today all together in a wonderful way and a deliberate way on focusing only on your hip. We ignore shots to start off with because we're only focused on getting rid of your sway, which you know over time will have a massive impact on your power and your accuracy. So take your time, focus, turn back, check. Yep, I'm in. And away we go. And all we're doing is, is we're not worried about strike or anything like that for now. We're just practicing their clock so the swing's climbing up. It's staying at this angle and we come down. Very, very straightforward, but be very deliberate in the way you practice this. I recommend a practice swing of probably two to one ratio. Okay, so two practice swings, getting a feel for it, then go to the golf ball, stop and hit, and then away you go. After you've done that for a period of time, yes, start to kind of make it a bit smoother, but really take your time with this. As always guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments box below. And if you know anyone else who has a sway and you think they might benefit uh, from this video, please share it, I'd really appreciate that. Until next week, have a great week. Goodbye. Hi, it's Danny. Did you like this video? If you did, there's two things you could do right now. Wanna to subscribe to my channel and receive this content on a weekly basis. The second thing you could do is you could head on over to my website right here and receive my weekly newsletter. In that newsletter, we have various different uh, advice in PDF format. You can access my podcast. In fact, many, many things that you cannot access on this channel. Head on over to it here. Until next week, have a great golfing week.